Hello, and welcome to the Coordinator Configurator Walkthrough. I wanted to start out by thanking all of you for your support and comments, as this channel passed 1,000 subscribers a few days ago, which I was not expecting, but I really do appreciate it. So as a heads up, I seem to have come down with a cold, so I might just sound a little congested throughout the video. As a general update, this video is accompanying the release of the Coordinator and Pocket Configurator tools. The Pocket Configurator will not be getting its own video as it only contains networking and logging configuration, which is the same as all the other configurators. The Pocket app is still in alpha, so it lacks really any features, but I'm working on it so you can expect to see some more features soon. So now for the main topic, the Coordinator Configurator. Unlike with the others, this one takes advantage of having another device already set up, specifically the supervisor. It is highly encouraged to set up the supervisor first since the coordinator configurator can then connect to that to load cooling configuration information to significantly aid with monitor setup. So this will start out with network configuration, which is then used to connect. So same as with other devices, you got your list of channels here, make sure those all match. Got your timeouts, got your trusted range, facility authentication key, which I don't have in this setup. And next, right here is where it'll prompt you to connect. You'll notice that the skip button was not originally available right away. This is to encourage you to connect. So here I'm gonna connect, you can see very quick, data received successfully. Then you'll see the next button appear here. You click that and you'll see uh, the facility has one reactor unit and this one unit has one boiler and one turbine. Next, you'll see the summary of the monitor requirements. So I'll need one unit view monitor, one main view monitor, and one flow view monitor. It'll list the dimensions required here. Note that this is where there'll be a difference. If you go back and instead you skip this, and say one reactor, I'm gonna put this little asterisk here because it doesn't know for sure what the height of that monitor needs to be. Because if you have two boilers and three turbines, the height requirement's gonna be different than if you only have one turbine and no boilers. So I've gone back, reconnected, move forward here, and I'll assign my main monitor. So there's this helpful thing while the configurator's running, it's gonna set the name of the monitor on each monitor. So here, this is my main monitor. It says it's monitor underscore one. Go over here, pick this set as main monitor. You'll note that here it says could work as either your main monitor or your flow monitor. That's because this could fit both. But in this case, we want it to be the main one. Next, we've got the four by four monitor here, monitor zero, which is the unit display. Go over here and set that. Just so you know, if you go to flow or main, it'll tell you that it won't fit. And it'll also say up here, this could work as the unit display. Do unit ID one, apply. And over here, have monitor two, which is the flow monitor. Notice that it doesn't fit anything, and that's because I was a little bit chaotic and broke a couple blocks here. So if I replace these and come over here, size will have updated. This now fits that um, monitor requirement over here. And I can set and then flow monitor. And then again, so since this only would fit the flow monitor because it's only three tall instead of four, it won't let you assign it as a main monitor. Apply this as flow monitor. And now everything's all set. I'll go next. Here there's the speaker configuration, which is the same thing as on the RTU. It's just the volume from zero to three. Then is the clock time format, which is displayed on the main and flow monitors in the top right. You can switch between 24 hour and 12 hour. Just be aware on some older versions of computer craft, the 12 hour time is bugged. Um, this is in the known issues on the wiki. So just want to let you know. In the future, there'll be a temperature unit selector as well, which you'll be able to switch between Celsius, Fahrenheit, and Kelvin. Next is the login configuration, which is the same thing as with all the other configurators, so I won't go through that again. And then lastly is the summary. Here you'll see all your settings. You can apply these, saved, start up, and you'll see everything come up and you're all set. So now I'm gonna demonstrate importing a legacy config. Just click this, you'll see a summary of the settings that are gonna get brought in. It's pretty quick, just hit apply and you'll be all set. We'll delete the old files. Note that if your one of your monitors is sized incorrectly, like here I broke the top layer of the unit monitor. Um, when you start up, it's gonna detect this. Say unit one monitor size is incorrect, was four by three, must be four by four. So if I fix this, do that. Since it's the right one, I know that I already fixed it, so I can just exit it. If there was another issue, like they're assigned to the wrong things, you're gonna have to go through and reconfigure. 
And that's it for now. I hope you found this informative. If you have any questions or want to chat, check out the Discord. The link for that can be found on the GitHub page. You can also submit questions to the GitHub discussions or report bugs there as an issue. Thank you for watching.